Hello all Potters and welcome to day two of our Herefordshire holiday. Now we've decided today to actually come to the England-Welsh border and behind me here, in the mist, that would be Bluff here, which is a, a mountain. Unfortunately you can't see it because it's a bit foggy. Luckily it hasn't been as uh, snowy today, although it's a bit bad underfoot because the snow's now melting and it's turning into a bit like the Somme. But, uh, we made it, we did We did promise ourselves and set our little hearts on coming up here and up here we've come. So anyway, we're going to make our way back now the way we've come. So, let's crack on. Right, we're now in Wales and I'm going to head back over into England. You see, this is look at all the borders they have in EU and look what we have for England and Wales. So, it's bye bye Wales. Hello England. Bye Wales. Now this is in response to Mr Northerner who said on one of my last videos Well I can get this hella good pair of walking boots Well it's a good idea that Mr Northerner but unfortunately Just take a look at what I'm stood in Now me and my good lady wife when we go walking We go proper walking, we don't do this glam walking you know With a little rucksack on and a bob like that We come to some of the most treacherous paths going That's what makes fun Anyway, go on folks, onwards and upwards Now another little part of my farmer's rant is this carry on here. Now one of the things as farmers always moan about is I've no money, you know, not got two acres rubbed together, yet they can afford just dump equipment. I just come past the farm here and there's been like Land Rovers just abandoned and vehicles, you know, all, all Volkswagen Polos just left. So really they're on a good screw end the front ministry keeping farmers happy. That's it. End of part two rant. We've now left the snowy uh, hills over there near the border between Wales and England and we've come to Arthur's Stone which is a Neolithic burial chamber. Obviously this dates back uh, many many years before Christ. Now legend has it that uh, King Arthur actually slew a giant here and when the giant fell he, he fell back and he left three indentation marks with his fingers or his elbows which are these marks here supposedly. The other uh, legend is that this is where King Arthur once prayed you know and he knelt and left these uh, marks in it or, although while there would be three of them I'm sure King Arthur didn't have three knees but there we go. They're quite interesting these uh, little burial chambers because they supposedly as well used to leave the bodies outside to be picked at and then they just put the skeletons inside them, they didn't use them as bury them as we now do, you know, putting people in a box and then burying them below ground. They used to actually let crows and that pick at them, rather a bit eerie really. Anyway, let's take a little loop round it because it, uh, it is quite interesting. This here is the false entrance, they don't think this was 
the entrance into it. Although it does look like it's a, an entrance and would have stepped down inside. Supposedly King Charles also uh, dined here before he uh, before he decided to go into battle. He actually chose this spot to to dine at. I can understand why it's a lovely view here even today. Surprisingly, this has never been excavated, according to uh, according to form. So they don't know actually what's buried in it or not. I should imagine this is the mound behind it, where there's actually things buried inside rather than under the. Although they did have some strange beliefs back then, so who, who knows why why it's actually positioned like this. Anyway, that's uh, that's it for today's walk, really. So we've sort of done it in two parts. So uh, until tomorrow, because we've got something rather interesting for tomorrow, uh, with it being Valentine's Day, you know, loving the air and all that. So my wife's wondering where I'm going to take her. So we'll see you tomorrow anyway. So until then, bye bye for now.